Hey everyone, welcome to Evanston Happy Hackers. It's December 7th, uh, it's about noon, 2024. What's and up? What's up? We're, I'm here with, uh, guys okay if I use your names? Yeah. Big Mac. Here with Big Mac and, uh, and Hassan and myself, Henry, and uh, we just did some MacBook repair. I couldn't, <laughs> I couldn't really record that. I guess I could have, um, but. What is that from? Uh, I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so um, yeah, I'm just going through the uh, the MacBook repair example. I have a solution that I had ChatGPT write, but we're not going to use that. Um, I'll put a link later too. But we're just coding this by hand right now. Uh, for some context, this is a uh, this is a command line tool that's meant to help you calculate how profitable MacBook repairs are. And it lets you enter data manually, or it lets you import it from a CSV file. And uh, I even added tab autocompletion too. But if you choose the CSV file, um, then it'll output a graph of your profit margins. And it does the same thing for uh, if you just enter in data manually. But we're going to try to replicate that. We only have 30 minutes, so we won't get that far. But I think getting the basic skeleton will still be possible. So if you want to get a piece of data from the user on the command line, you can use a function called input. Um, and you run the program, Sorry. you type in some stuff, press enter, it'll print out the stuff, which is great. Uh, so what we can do is change this message to say, just have some print statements that say welcome to our MacBook repair profit calculator one open a file change this to print statement one open a file to enter data And um, I think if you already know Python, I would actually recommend either using code you already know works or generating it with AI, because it's just so much faster. Um, but if you're still learning programming, I wouldn't recommend using it because you won't understand why things work the way that they do. So um, once we get the, the data, we should check to see if it's a one or a two. We can just say if my var is equal to one. And we'll just see if this uh, just see if this works. And then we can check to see if it's two. We'll print shows two. And then I'll have an else that catches the case that they don't choose either of the two. And I'll just say invalid choice. And this is a pretty simple pattern for handling input. Uh, you'll, if you look at other command line tools that are very simple, you probably see something really similar. Hassan, do you have any questions so far? Is this boring? Because I'll go faster if it is. No, that's fine. Keep your time. Yeah. Okay. I get bored quick, so I, I like to see the. I like to speed to the yeah. to the end, but I'll I'll keep going at um, the same. Oh, cool. All right, it looks like it works just fine. So, sick. Um, so we can check to see if it's one or two. So if it's one, we should load a CSV file into a pandas data frame. And then if it's two, we should um, enter data manually. So because the we don't really know what, well, we kind of do know what data we need. Ma uh, MacBook cost, harvested part value, resale value, and overhead. So I guess, Hassan, which one do you want to see? Uh, number one or two? I could code either. Um, let's do two. Two? Okay, sick. Um, so we need to get these different pieces of data. And um, I live like in Humboldt Park. I don't know, maybe you could drop them off. First, we're going to ask them how many MacBooks 
That's fine. They want to repair. Uh, they, they're going to repair. So we're just going to get a number from them. So I'm going to say num MacBooks equals input number yeah, of MacBooks to repair. And then we're going to make it an integer. And then we're just going to print it just to make sure it's a regular value. Here's something really cool that I want to pause and sort of take a look at. Um, if, you, if you want to use debug mode in PyCharm, there's this thing called the gutter. And it's where all the line numbers yeah, live. For sure, and if you bro, click I on one like of the line three, numbers, for now, you can like set uh, a breakpoint. So if I right click on Mac Profit CLI and then click on Debug Mac Profit CLI. Um, okay, how many do you have? Like 10? It'll put us into a debugger. And if we start executing this line of code that has a breakpoint on it, it'll yeah, just let me pause just grab execution. 10 of those for now. I'll probably grab another 10 like, in a couple days. So I pressed 2 I and I, then I pressed around. enter. And it paused on line 37. And we're about to ask the user hey, for the number of MacBooks the that they want to repair. The two, and if I click on resume program, I can type in three. And now yeah. we can go to threads and variables. You have none? And we can look at all of the local variables. And I want you to notice that we just executed line 37, and num MacBooks is a string type. So if I want to type in like num MacBooks plus one, mm -hmm. we get an error, uh, and that's I mean, because a string is just a piece of text. Uh, so if, if I type in int num MacBooks plus one, then I get four. The reason that I have line 38 is so that I can convert the string into an integer. And if I click on resume program, now num MacBooks got converted into an integer, so we can actually use it. Um, and we're going to use it in a for loop. So we want to repeatedly ask the user these three pieces of information three times because we have three MacBooks. And we can just do that with a for loop. We'll say for i in range zero num MacBooks. I'm going to call this MacBook ID. Do you have 12? 87? And now, yeah, we I'll can just ask them yeah. for these three I'll pieces of and data. Then five from and I'm just going to copy and paste this. Or sorry, five, it's five and ninety-six. And I'll grab more. I just once, once you have a useful there. pattern, um, you'll notice in coding you can kind of just copy paste stuff if you need to like repeat an operation. So once, once we have our three pieces of data, we want to store them in some way. Um, I'm gonna store them in a list. I'm just gonna call it my data. I'm gonna make an empty list. Yeah, and I'm grabbing like like. I'm gonna call this single parts. data, and make you don't have to do like 30 a new list you, you of MacBook you costs. Helping you to yeah. harvested part value and resale value. I mean, I, I didn't, I didn't even put the price on a line yet. And I'm also gonna, gonna put MacBook ID into the list too because I want to be able to identify yeah, like which what, MacBook okay. it is. What do you usually sell the, the 61 for and 87? You can actually think of this as a single check, row check in an yeah, Excel like spreadsheet. Um, is that cool with you? Yeah, okay. Yeah, let me just work out a price with you and then I'll come pick it up. Okay, thanks, bro. There's about 30 charges. Nice. Locally. Nice. I need some adapters, but you know, I'll find them somewhere else. Congrats. Literally, 30, it has 30 charges in stock. I nice. literally have like 
Right. So many, I have like 200 laptops at the house. <laughs> like I need chargers. Nice. Right. Okay, I can hang out, you know? The next thing we're going to do is take this row and add it to all of our rows. So we can just say my data dot append um, single data. And I don't remember if append modifies the list itself or if it's return if it returns a new list. So I'm going to look that up. W three schools. <laughs> yeah, those were the days, man. <laughs> yeah. Geeks for geeks. Make sure. Yep, this is still recording. Good. Um. Okay. Yeah. So, it might be difficult to make all of these changes if you're not used to writing Python. If if you don't feel comfortable making a for loop and then adding some operations and then making a new list in the middle of the for loop and then appending this new list to a, a bigger list, I would recommend doing those steps one by one and then putting like breakpoints uh, in the gutter in PyCharm and then running it step by step. So you can just right click and then click on debug and uh, just watch it work. So enter data. Don't care about these because we know it works. Click on resume. Gonna do three MacBooks. MacBook cost is a thousand. Harvested part value is two hundred. So we've got these two strings, which is really cool. If you hover over a variable, it'll show you the value. Alternatively, you can also go to threads and variables and see them here. And we're about to get the resale value, which let's say it goes for 2,000. And then we're about to declare a new array. And we just did. So single data has these four elements in it, which is really neat. And we're, we're basically, um, I, I think I like to think about programming as, because everyone knows what an Excel spreadsheet is. People use them to do all sorts of different useful things. And I think if you think about programming as like, manipulating an Excel spreadsheet, it's, it's really easy to understand for most people. Um, and then I'll hit the continue button, and now it, it's asking us for our second MacBook. So this is kind of hard to read, because I don't realize that this is the first laptop it's asking about, and this is the second one. So I'm just going to make like a little message. I'm going to stop the program. And make like a message that says, "You got this far." Yeah, we're. You're now, here. you're now entering data. You're now entering data for MacBook. MacBook ID. Have to use str to make it an integer, or to make it a string because it's currently an integer. Str string. Yeah. Like I said, Andy, words are hard. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're difficult. Um, OK. Close this. What else do I need? Don't need this. Don't need this. Don't need this. Don't need this. I should have done streaming instead of recording. That's another thing. I have a, like, restream.io is a site that lets you stream to multiple platforms. I've been, uh, I haven't, this is the only, this is like the second time I've been using that, so it's kind of, I forgot, I forgot that I was trying to use that. Anyway, uh, back to the programming. Okay, I think we could just run this and see if it, See, enter data. 
We don't need to print it out twice. The print to do. Exit one. Two means you want to enter data. Number of MacBooks to repair. Sick. Okay, cool. So it tells you which MacBook you're entering stuff from, which is awesome. Um, and we get the data and we make it into a row, and then we add it to our data, and then outside of the for loop, we're done gathering our data. We need to put it into a pandas data frame. So I'm just gonna import a library called pprint and pprint is just it helps you print out big lists of data so that you can look at them. Um, alternatively you could just data alternatively you can just like run it in debug mode and inspect it but if you don't have debug mode it can be sometimes easier to just use pprint. So yeah, if, if we look at my data, it's just, that's the ID. Those are the three data values that they enter. And yeah, it looks like it's working just fine. So it's a list of lists. It's a two-dimensional array, whereas each individual element is just a 1D array. Um, and now I don't remember how to import a list of lists into Python or into uh, pandas, so I'm just going to look it up. But a lot of uh, a lot of programming is just looking stuff up. This is AI generated. It might it might work. I'm just gonna see if it works. So the first argument to np.array is just some 2D array. My data is already a two-dimensional array, so we can just use it. And then the first, the first column is MacBook ID. The second column is MacBook cost. Third column is harvested part value. And the fourth column is resale value. I, I just had an idea, which is really useful, but if, if you want to make a library that other people can use, this is a fantastic example of something you could give to other people. Because this this is a problem specific for, this code is specific to like getting data from the command line that you type in and then putting it into like some data structure and then maybe you could save it to Excel. If you could extract all of these variable names, to a separate file, you could use that as a way to make a generic template for taking data from for any list of parameters and just putting it into a uh, an Excel spreadsheet. So if you, if you find a useful piece of code and you make it really generic, and you start to distribute it, and other people realize it's useful, um, you've just made a library. That's what a library is. It's just code someone else wrote. So yeah, yeah. Yeah, if, yeah, and if you're, 
you know, if, if your, uh, your classmate says, like, hey, uh, I have to, and someone has to type in a bunch of data on the command line for a school assignment, how the heck do I do this? You can just say, oh, I wrote, a, I wrote something that already does it, you know. So, yeah, yeah, it can end up being really, really useful. Darth Vader, Star Wars, Demi <laughs> Nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I broke my other phone. It's like my Apple Pay. Uh, Stopped know, working. Yeah, on that one. It's like manually add every card back it on this phone. It does sound pretty annoying. It was. Every application, every login, every bank, every Gmail. Oh, it's been like two hours doing this shit. Jeez. Once you do it once, you forget about it, you know? Yeah, you don't have to do it more than once. Um, okay, so we've got our data frame. It's useful. Um, this main function is kind of bothering me because like, it's, it's getting kind of big. So it would be useful if I could take all of this code and put it into its own function. That, that's another thing that you'll notice as as you start writing code is you'll want to take code and just put it into chunks that is reusable and easier to read. Um, and making functions can, you know, can definitely do that. Um, so I'm just going to run this and see, see how it looks. Enter data, two MacBooks, one, 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 two, two, two. Cool. It's definitely, this is, um, when, when you print a data frame in, uh, in Pandas, it kind of looks like this. It sort of looks like an Excel spreadsheet. And then this is just P prints output. And then this is the data frame output. Yeah, it looks pretty normal. I want to make a git commit because I've done some work. What have we changed? I guess we let people enter data manually. We haven't really s done any analysis. Uh, like we haven't calculated gross profits and we haven't plotted the data frame, but those shouldn't be too hard to do. Allow, p let people enter in. Cool. Um, Hassan, do you have any questions so far? Sick. All right. So, calculate gross profits for each repair and restore it in each data frame row. So, we're, I guess we could do this now. Um, So, yeah, yeah, right. I think I'm gonna go home. Okay. We're getting exhausted. Okay. Um, maybe hit me up later. Yeah. I'm gonna be take a nap. Take a fucking nap. Yeah. I'll wake up and then get back to like we're like a fucking dog. Okay. <laughs> well, I think in that case, Andy, I'm I'm probably gonna wrap up because I gotta leave in five minutes. Hassan, yeah. I think a cool take home activity would be to. Uh, Take the code at this point and try to do this step three. And see if you can do it. Okay. Yeah. 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 Fun. yeah, I'll send you the I'll That's send you the link to it. Sounds great. And if anyone's watching this video, you can do the take home too. <laughs> uh, what you can do is um, Go to github.com slash melting scales slash Evanson Happy Hackers. Uh, head to Mac Profit CLI. And then if you head to CP Mac Profits. Okay, 
I've made a file called uh, .takehome.py that you can just use, and uh, I'll send it to you. I'll put it on the YouTube video, and I'll also put it in the Discord too. Yeah. yeah. If you get stuck, let me know. Just ping me. Um, but yeah. One minute away. Andy, you got everything? Yeah, I'm gonna grab my bag tonight. You get stickers? I got stickers. Sick. Thanks, man. Been real, my man. <laughs> Have a good one. You too. Alright, thanks everyone for watching.